Hello everyone. Welcome to part 4 of LLM Jargons Explained. So in this video and even in the next video, let's discuss about what is heavy cash and uh, why, uh, why it is being used and also we'll discuss about uh, what is page retention in the next video. So as always, let's get back to the basics. So now let's say we have given some input prompt and uh, it has divided into, uh, of course it has to go through something called tokenizers and after that, you know, it will be converted into embeddings and so on and so forth, right? And let's say whatever the input prompt we have given, let's say it has split it into six tokens, let's say W1 to W6. Now we want to generate the next token that is W7. Now we also discussed the famous attention formula uh, that means each of the tokens has something called a query vector, key vector and also called value vector. And we also discussed that, you know, query vector will be multiplied with the key vectors and that will be scaled down. On top of that, we will take the softmax and also will be multiplied with the value vectors of the rest of the tokens. And uh, that whatever the value we get, that's an embedding that will be passed to the next layer and so on and up to so forth till we reach the last layer. Right. Similarly here, if you want to generate the next token that is W7, what we need to do is we need to take the query vector of the W6 token, which will be multiplied with the keys and it will be scaled down just the process which I explained now. And that is basically we get the attention scores. And once we apply the softmax, we'll come to know what, how much of the importance should be given for each of the tokens and that will be multiplied with the value vectors, right? And uh, this is what it is done to generate the token W7. Of course, the token will be generated the last layer using the softmax on top of all of the vocab which you have. Now, during this process, keys and values of W6 will also be calculated. Also, we had discussed that usually in the decoder only model, it goes through majorly two phase. One is in the pre-filling phase and second is an iterative uh, phase. What I mean by this is, for example, these are all the prompts given or the tokens given by the user itself. And here there is no absolute requirement of to generate the query, right? And only we need to generate the keys and values so that the next tokens can utilize it. And this carry on, you know, all of this process can be done parallelly. That's why GPU is heavily being used here in this process. Now, if you want to generate the token W7 or W8, W9, whatever it is, we need to go through an iterative process, just like the way which are done for W6 tokens, right? Now, now after W6, we'll come to know, hey, W7 got generated. Now, if you want to generate a next token, that is a W8, obviously, we'll, we generate the query token, sorry, query embedding for the W7 token which will be multiplied with keys and values of the previous, including the W6. Now here is a catch. Even to generate W7 token, we have done the same thing, right? We have taken the keys of W1, W2, W3, W4, W5, we multiply with the queues. Similarly, if you want to generate a W8 tokens, again, we will be doing the same. That means we take the queue of W7, that will be multiplied with keys, of W1 to W5 and then we will able to generate the next token that is W8. So now if you could able to recall from our flash attention understanding GPU, there is a lot of back and forth happening here because once it is read again it will be written back and even to generate the next token we need to read the keys and the values and uh, for the all of the previous tokens right and it consumes a lot of bandwidth. So now that's why instead of going back to the GPUs or going back to the RAM to get keys and values for every iterative process, why not we cache it, right? It's as simple as that. That's where the concept of KV cache comes into picture. We will also discuss down the line after a couple of minutes how uh, we will also visit how the hardware structure in the computer works and where exactly KV cache might have been used, right? So instead of storing to the GPUs or the RAM, why not store it? That's what KV cache is. People also mention about KV head because we know that transformer has many layers and each layer has many heads. And if the KV cache is a head, that is KV head.
now few of the challenges um, in the kv cache few of them includes of course these are all the challenges which was identified by the authors of page attention so it was observed that only 20 to 40 percent of the memory was being utilized in the kv cache first of all we know that gps are very costly and it comes up with a lot of pricing on top of that we use kv caching so that we can make use of the iterative method faster but if we could able to make use of more than at least like 80 or 90 that would be a better position to be in than using 20 to 40 percent of the utilization right because we are just paying it but we are not make, uh, making use of the extra memory so after their experiment they figure out that there are few of the reasons why kv cache is underutilized few of the problems are fragmentation and something called reservation now if you take a typical model like llama 2 7 billion it has a sequence length of 4096 now we know that in a decoder model we never know when the generation will gonna stop there are only two instances in which we can say that hey this is where the generation going to end that is either you get a special token called end of sequence eos token or either you had running out of the tokens only these are the scenarios where you will come to know that hey I, this is where i need to stop it but for to, to do i mean to even to store all of this we need to have the 4096 memory slots in hand so that's why we also want this memory to be continuous and so that we can as and when the new tokens generated case and b's can be cached but let's say in all the time we will not be able to use 4096 most of the times i don't know that depends on the request we may be able to use only 500 what does that mean 4000 minus 500 only those many lift will go unutilized right this is called internal fragmentation similar kind of fragmentation occurs when you pass a batch of a request or a batch of a data point to predict something so now this is all the fragmentation where the memory is allocated but you end up with it not utilizing because of the nature of the request because of the nature of how llm works even the same with the reservation because you reserve the memory slots thinking you're gonna use it down the line but the result might have finished earlier and these are the major two reasons why we have you know end up with using only 20 to 40 percent of the utilization and moreover if you could be able to recall from the old operating system console there is something called malloc calloc and other related stuff where you request the where you request to get the memory slots right and in this case we want that memory to be continuous just imagine i think we will also discuss about what it takes to store a kv cache so if uh, that is one of the major constraint in the kv cache too and um, these are the major challenges in the kv cache of course page attention has overcome this and we will discuss about what is page attention in the next video but just before going ahead let's uh, recap of our you know small hardware thing which we discussed in flash attention uh, understanding gpus so we know that you know it we have a lot of hierarchy in the uh, system we have the hard disk the data goes to ram and we have several cache hierarchy and we have the gpus and even in the gpu we have something called gpu ram or it's also called as gpu memory and in the gpu also we have l2 cache and we have the streaming multiprocessors and we have called on chip memory right so if you want to process anything on the gpus it has to go through from the hard disk to ram to gpu of course in the cache and then here as well we have the cache inside the gpu and then streaming multiprocessors and then finally the registers now also we know that you know as and when we go down the line memory the you know memory size decreases and also the fastness of the hardware underlying increases in this case hardware is slower compared to gpus and in this case tensor cores or CUDA cores are faster compared to gpus so now let's see uh, uh, let's see one of the examples of how to what it takes to store a kv cache right I would just let me try zooming in a bit. Yeah. So let's take an example of Llama 2 7 billion model. And as I was saying multiple times, this has a transformer model and it has 32 layers. 
and each of the layers has something called heads in this case we have 32 heads okay and each of the head has a dimension that is a, a head dimension i think 128 for our simplicity let's take we are passing only one data point so that case batch size will come one and precision in bytes that is only let's assume that we are not using 32 bits we are using only 16 bits that means to store 16 bits we require it bytes and what are the memory calculation which i am going to show here it will be in bytes okay now let's see how much of memory we require to store one token both k and v right so now i have taken two here uh, this is a formula to calculate the kv cache per token uh, because we need to store keys as well as a value vector per token that's why the two here and we need to store it for all of the layers and in all of the heads for each of the head dimensions whatever it is right and not for each of the dimensions because we need to have the dimension multiply so that we will come to know how much of the bytes required but we need to store it for all of the heads and also how much of the memory that has been returned in precision in bytes now if you calculate this this is in bytes i think it seems like almost we require half mb to store kv per token right across all of the layers and all of the heads now let's say we know that you know we have 4096 sequence length of llama 2 and if we want to do it for one request because i as i mentioned earlier we need to request earlier that for every request if you are using kv cache we need to store all of this earlier Uh, before in hand so now you've just multiplied by kv cache per token multiply the sequence length you get this big number uh, so i'm just uh, you know, converting this which because this is in bytes right and if you convert this into gbs that is like 2 gb that means if you are using a kv cache you require at least 2 gb of kv cache which is freely available to process one request and that request could be 500 win tokens or that could be 200 or it could be even 4000 or it could be whatever the numbers but we require 2 gb of kv cache which is very huge if you could able to think right now let's see if you uh, let's say we increase the batch size right now we are consider only batch size of one right let's say because usually at a scale you don't pass one at a time at the offline inference you will go for a higher number let's say even to let's say on this let's say a uh, batch size of 16 now we require 32 gb of kv cache now you 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 got to know that it's very huge now even the 32 let's say we end up with using only 0.4 that means only 12 to 13 gb of kv cache is being used and almost 20 gb though it is allocated it is not able to make use of it now that's a huge drawback and we know that its gpu is pricey and Let's see in the next video how page attention has overcome this problem and using this if not full full use of 32 i think it has made use of 96% of the you know memory well uh, very well so let's see in the page attention video how they have done it what are the operating system concepts like memory management etc they have used it so thank you so much for watching this video